Well, hello everyone from St. Chad's Primary. It's Reverend Joe here. The Lord be with you and also with you. Well, it's good to be together again today as we celebrate collective worship with school and church. And what I want to talk to you today is all about honesty. And we're going to start with this verse. I'll put it on the screen for you to read as well. And it's from the New Testament. It was written by St. Paul. And he said this, we are trying hard to do what the Lord accepts as right and also do what people think is right. We are trying hard to do what the Lord accepts as right and also what people think is right. OK, and what he's talking about there is we're trying to be honest and have integrity about everything that we do. Now, put your hand up if you like chocolate. Put your hand up if you like Cadbury's chocolate the best. I love Cadbury's chocolate. So what we're going to do now, we're going to have a quiz all about chocolate. And it's a true or false quiz, but it comes with a twist, OK? If you think it's true or false, I don't want you to put your hand up. I don't want you to call out. I don't want you to sit up or to, to sit down. I just want you to keep quiet and just to keep a score, maybe in your head. Or if you've got a pen and pencil with you, keep it down on some, some paper with you. And just to keep in your own head privately what you have, OK? And then at the end, I'm going to ask you how many questions you got correct. And I want you to be honest about the score that you had. OK, does that make sense? So don't call out anything. Don't look at anyone else. Just keep it in your head privately. OK, so a quiz all about chocolate, true or false. So the first question, the ancient Egyptians drank chocolate, true or false? The ancient Egyptians drank chocolate. So just keep it in your head, true or false. Give you a few more seconds. Well, the answer to that one is false. It wasn't the Egyptians. It was the ancient Aztecs who drank chocolate. OK, so keep it to yourselves. Question two. Eating chocolate can help you stop coughing. Eating chocolate can help you stop coughing. True or false? True or false? Well, that's actually true because chocolate contains a cough suppressing chemical called theobromine. OK, Theob I can't even say it. theobromine, <laughs> theobromine, I think it's called theobromine. So well done if you got that right. That was true. It contains theobromine. OK, next question. Drinking chocolate was originally mixed with chili powder. True or false? Drinking chocolate was originally mixed with chili powder. True or false? A few more seconds. And the answer to that one is true. It was a favourite drink of the ancient Aztecs to, to mix drinking chocolate with hot, fiery chili powder. So if any of you like chili chocolate, well, that was made a long, long time ago. OK, we're going to go a bit further through history now. So next question. It was the British who brought chocolate into Europe. So it was the British who brought chocolate into Europe. True or false? And the answer to that one is false. It was actually the Spanish who introduced chocolate into Europe. And that was in the year 1528. And we're learning lots of new stuff this morning. OK, next question. In 2001, OK, before any of you were born, I was 13. In 2001, British people ate most ate more than half of all the chocolate in the entire world. So in 2001, British people ate more than half of all the chocolate in the entire world. True or false? How much do British people like chocolate? The answer to that one is false. It wasn't the British who ate half of the chocolate in the world. It was our cousins over the pond. It was the Americans who ate half of the chocolate in the world. OK, next one. Cadbury's Dairy Milk is Britain's most popular chocolate bar. True or false? Cadbury's Dairy Milk is Britain's most popular chocolate bar. True or false? Well, the answer to that one is indeed true. Well, well done. Now, what I'm going to ask you now, so there's quite a few questions there. Let me just count them up. So one, two, three, four, five, six questions. OK, so I want you to be honest. 
in how you answer these this next part, okay? Put your hand up if you got more than two questions right. Well done. Keep your hand up if you got more than three questions right. More than four? More than five? Did anyone get all six questions right? Okay, well, well done. If It doesn't matter how many you got right. Well done, because there were some really hard questions there. So pop your hands down if you've still got them up. And maybe when, you know, when we keep those answers to ourselves, I wonder if any of you felt the temptation to maybe, you know, bend the truth a little bit and say, oh, yeah, I got all six right when you actually only got four. You know, it, it can be a little bit tempting, can't it, just to maybe bend that truth a little bit and not be as honest as we should do. Now, I'm sure you all know about Cadbury's chocolate. Has anybody here, put your hand up, if anybody has ever been to the Cadbury's chocolate family factory in Birmingham? I've been there. I wonder if anyone else has been. Now, Cadbury's is my favourite chocolate. I love a dairy milk bar, just perfect. But I wonder if you know the history behind Cadbury's chocolate, okay? And if you know about this family who made them. In fact, they were a very honest family who showed lots of integrity. And I'm going to tell that story. I'm going to put some pictures on the screen, okay? So off we go. So the Cadbury's manufacturing business was established by a man called John Cadbury, and there he is, in 1831 in a small factory in Birmingham. And he was the youngest son of a well-known Quaker family in the city. Now, Quakers were very religious people who believed that the best way that they, get, they can show their love for God is by helping improve the lives of others, and that's what Quakers still do today. Now, John Cadbury made and sold drinking chocolates because he believed it was good for people to drink chocolate rather than alcohol. And he used a lot of the profits that he made from his business to stop children being sent up chimneys and prevent any cruelty to animals. Now, when John retired, his sons, Richard and George, took over the business. And there's Richard and George. And they shared the same beliefs as their father. And George is famous for once saying the following quote. He said, we can do nothing of any value to God except in acts of genuine helpfulness done to our fellow men and women. Now, as the company grew, George had a vision as to how the new site for the Cadbury factory should look. And he and his brother shared this vision and chose not to build the factory in a busy city centre with lots of pollution, but instead they built one in the countryside. Now, George didn't just build a factory. He also provided good houses with gardens for the workers, all on a site that they called Bourneville, and you can still visit this town today. And on that same site, he also built a hospital, washrooms, libraries, restaurants, a dental surgery, and a school where, even though he was their boss, he helped teach his workers and their children how to read and, what, and write. Now, Cadbury workers enjoyed rights that no other workers at the time could even dream of. They got bank holidays off. They could take Saturday afternoons off. They had a pension scheme and sporting facilities. George Cadbury said this. He said, nearly all my money is invested in businesses in which I believe I can truly say that the first fault is of the welfare of the people who are employed. And so George Cadbury was also concerned about the workers in other countries who grew and harvested the beans from which chocolate is made. And he refused to buy cocoa beans from any country where slaves were made to do this work. And instead, he was the first factory owner to purchase fair trade. He always wanted to be honest. So that's an amazing story about this wonderful, honest family with so much integrity, trying their best to look after other people the way that God wants us to be to one another. So I've got some questions for you that I want you to discuss as a group together. Okay, first one is this. So what do you think about the story of the Cadbury family, of the Cadbury family? And why is it important to live a life of honesty? So I'm going to put that on the screen. What do you think about this story from the Cadbury family? And why is it important to live a life of honesty? Discuss that one together. Okay, well, my next question is this one. How might the world look 
if we were all a bit more honest in everything that we said and everything that we do? How might the world look if we were all a bit more honest? Discuss that one together. Wonderful, well done guys. I'm sure you had some really great responses there. Well, as we've looked at that amazing story, knowing how God wants us to be honest and to help one another and to see that really encouraging, inspiring story of the Cadbury family, let's put our hands together, maybe close our eyes and say this prayer. So dear God, help us to be fair and honest in everything that we do. May our first thoughts not be about ourselves, but let us be more concerned about the welfare of others. We pray that companies across the world will treat their work as well. We pray too for organisations to promote more fair trade products. May their efforts help make your world a fairer place to be. Amen. So let us then pray that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So it's been lovely spending some time with you today. I bet you all want to have some chocolate now, don't you? Well, maybe, maybe at lunchtime or when you get home or later on this week. But just remember that those really wonderful stories about being honest and fair with one another and take that into the heart of your school and your families and our town over this next week and even beyond. But we'll see you all soon and I wish you all the very best for this week. Take care, guys. Bye.